the climate debt, this was put on the table by the, um, the group of 77 in China uh, during the first time on the Postnan discussion, that's 2008. And it was brought back again in Copenhagen. And uh, more than close to 60 countries are already supporting this idea that the fundamental reality in, in the climate discourse is that those who are severely affected now or those that are suffering now on climate change are mostly the people who did not contribute to it or did not contribute a lot to it. Because if we will look at the poor majority, uh, their lifestyle, their their emission is is not huge. And and but at the same time when a catastrophe happened, they're the first one to become victims. They are the first ones who experience loss of their livelihood and loss of home. Uh, if we put that in certain sectors, for example, uh, farming or agriculture, which indeed uh, emit, um, you know, produce emission, but if we come, if we come to think of it, their activity is that of producing food for humanity. So it's a, it, it's now a question of what kind of emission and for what purpose. Now the discourse on climate debt is that. For many developing countries, they're saying that for so long, since the Industrial Revolution, the now industrialized countries have emitted or have claimed a space which is more than just or more than, more than they deserve or more than, more than equal, uh, have ad achieved their development or achieved their, their or, or are enjoying their economic status now because in the past when they started using the natural resources and extracting resources, there's no climate change. And, and that uh, if we would look at the accumulated emission that, that uh, the developed countries have done in the last 150 to 200 years, uh, this is more than their fair share of the atmosphere. So many of the developing countries are now contesting that this should be seen as a debt owed by the now developed countries to the rest of the of the developing countries because they have used up more space than than they that they that, than they justifiably have and uh, that is actually uh, coming from the framework also of who owes whom um, if we would look at the the um, paradigm of development, what we have now is a kind of political economy that, that, that wherein development is equivalent to growth or for many developing countries, the, the remaining path to growth is that of uh, manufacturing or, or using their natural resources to enable to, to get foreign, um, uh, foreign earnings. So in the, in the climate campaign, uh, especially when we look at the climate justice framework, um, the idea that now we are in this very, very uh, difficult situation facing a catastrophe or facing a climate crisis um, is, is because if if we would look at the at the distribution or or a space um, claimed by people in in our atmosphere that has not been just, and that it is time that the polluter must pay, and that is a, the debt that they owed to the developing countries, and there are even two arguments that, that go with it as well. So that is a. Uh, a climate debt and an emission debt, which means the continuing impact of climate change is still being felt uh, by the developing countries now. And also the gap to achieve the development they need will now be more difficult due to climate change. So that means uh, if the, the current uh, framework of understanding on climate will not be changed, that means that um, the solutions that are that are on the table at the moment, which is more market-based, will not correct the inequities. That will not correct um, 
the the you know the past situation wherein there is inequality and an unequal space or an unequal claim to the atmosphere and and instead of the Annex One countries or the developed countries doing what is sufficient, sufficient action to curb their emission, what they are forcing is that instead of lowering their emission, they wanted to pay the developing countries for the space um, that the developing countries could still use for their own development. So it became now a matter of recolonization of the South through uh, through that space of how much more emission one can use. Uh, the reality is that whatever movement, whatever activity we do, uh, will contribute to climate change. So it is a big question, how can we ensure that we put appropriate value um, or space or carbon footprints to everything? Because there's a big difference with farmers farming for food and thereby causing emission than people who fly in a single jet to attend a party in another city. So there's a big injustice there. There's a big difference in the warming effect that those activities in, entail. And, and what is funny is that many of the solutions are not just and not fair, especially all the CDMs, which is um, a compromise. If to enable the U.S. and the develop and the much of the annex countries to accept the Kyoto Protocol, what we ended up is a very weak Kyoto Protocol that has CDMs, which is actually tricky. Uh, it will not lower the emissions from developed countries, but it's more like asking the developing countries to give up more space. So, in in order for the developed countries to continue polluting.